<laughs> oh wait, this is going to be recorded? It is. It is. So if anyone doesn't want their sweet face shown, you can shut your camera off, but we're mostly just looking at Sean. <laughs> yeah, great. Um, so I don't know if you read in the chat, anybody that's on here from Quashner or Coombs, you can actually leave because we won't be going over anything that will be pertinent to you today because your schedules are not set. So there's nowhere that you can go. Um, on top of that, the, uh, the high school people do it completely different. So even if you wanted to sit in and listen, um, you'd be getting all the wrong information. Um, and once your schedules are set, we'll, we'll reschedule this for next week. Also, anybody on here that is looking for admin help, that's not gonna be covered today either. This is just gonna be, um, well, I mean, part of, part of the admin side will, but only as far as it relates to um, teachers. I won't be able to go into a lot of detail on the admin side since teachers won't see a lot of those things anyway. So where to begin? I'm going to hit mute so it stays on you. Yep. I'm just logging into Power Teacher, so we'll all look at the same thing. And I think uh, I think I remember Deb Trionis's password, so I'm going to use her as the guinea pig. That's fine. <laughs> I'm glad you remember mine. <laughs> Actually, I don't. You want me to send it to you um, privately? <laughs> I meant to unmute myself and I muted you, Sean. I'm sorry. That's fine. I don't need to be talking right now anyway. <laughs> I can't talk and type at the same time. It's... Oh, so Deb, yeah, I would send it to him in a private um, Zoomy thing down the bottom there. <laughs> she can either do that or she just text or whatever she wants. Yeah, I'll text uh, it to you right now. Wait, just to be clear, you want the Power School one or the Google one? The Power School one. Okay. Okay, hold on. Did you see how you can wear your masks? Like earrings? Like earrings. I got it. Awesome. See, see? Yep. Can I Go ahead, Elizabeth. Yeah, you can ask. Can Sean's getting himself, yeah, Sean's getting himself logged on. Okay, so you bye. have a minute. Okay. <laughs> um. Susie, can you go ahead and just change your password? Change mine or change Deb's? 
change depths. To just mash P? Yeah, yeah mash, mash P. All so right, have, and then you'll, all right. Yeah. Yep. Give me two seconds, maybe three. Stuff. Just so everybody knows, this is not easy for tech directors either. <laughs> oh, they know that now. All right, I changed it to MASHP with no capital M and then you can plug in the new secure one that she just gave you. Thank you. You're welcome. Do Jill, Sean's just getting logged in. Okay. Yay, look at you. All right, I'm gonna put Yay, you. Finally. Thank you for your patience. So this is the screen that everybody sees when they log into PowerSchool. Um, your classes, your backpack. Backpack shows you the kids for anybody that's new out there. Um, there's a print tab over here. But basically what I'm gonna go over today is just how to get your, um, your students set up in PowerTeacher Pro. Because that's usually where all the problems stem from. Um, for anybody that's brand new to the building, I'll be seeing you individually to give you some more information. But uh, for these purposes, I'll just be going over the basic Power Teacher Pro setup. Pretty much nothing has changed from since we started this, other than some of the screens might look a little different. Um, I need to move this down a little bit. Um, the the first thing you'll you'll notice is up here in the you know right below what you, is basically your initials you'll see where it says Y1. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that's always in the quarter that you're in. Y1 is basically the, the whole year. So that's where, that's the end container for everything. So I'm just moving into quarter one because that's where most of you will be doing your, um, all your work. I'm gonna start in settings. Um, I'm going to start with display settings. Uh, I'll follow up with the document that I probably already sent you, but I, I'm going to go through it one more time and just make sure everything in there is still valid. Um, for you guys, you will show traditional grades. Pretty much I've forced this part of the setup down onto you um, from the district. So all of your um, assignments should start this way, but it would be good just to go here and um, take a look to make sure like new, new assignments start checked, make sure they're gonna be auto calculating. Um, the only time you would do that to go unchecked if it was something that you wanted to make sure that they, um, that wasn't gonna be auto calculated. So I, I don't know what that would be for busy work, whatever. Um, and then last name first, that's kind of your, your uh, preference, but that's usually what everybody goes with. So there's, in the display settings, um, there's really not a lot to, uh, to change unless you plan on not showing standards or showing standards on assignments. Um, that all depends on how your class, if you have to uh, put standards in and, and stuff like that. So here at the, the high school, um, high school, middle school, we use the traditional grade calculations Washington and Coombs would use the standard grade calculations. Um, so here you can see that um, I've already bas basically set up like 
these containers for you. And what you'll need to do is, and, and these are based on um, whatever your department is doing um, for your, your calculation. So I'm going, I'm, going to, I'm going to actually edit the Y1, um, which is the year long calculation. And this, this happens to be a semester long class. And we, we're going to do term weighting only for Y1. I'm just going to add another one. And you see it's fairly smart. It's actually adding the next semester or the next quarter in this case. That would be the exam, the midterm exam. Oh, oops, I went too far. So for your semester long courses, you'll see, and this is, uh, works both ways, whether it's a semester one, semester two, right? So semester one, you have quarter one, quarter two, and- Hey, exam Sean, yes. I'm so sorry to interrupt you. So I just got texted that uh, Mark is doing his meeting right now. So that might explain why there aren't very many people in the room right now. So we're there, supposed to, I'm supposed to be in that right now. Oh, okay. Uh, um, so anybody yeah. from the high school is supposed to be on his meeting. <laughs> oh, well, guess what, guys? <laughs> Thank you for joining me today. Oh, I'm uh, sorry. No, no, that, that's okay. Uh, I'll send out the information, um, hard copy, and then we'll go over this one more time live. Yes, okay. Sounds I am good. Gonna save this. I'm going to save that for you, Deb. Okay, thank Sean. you. Sean, yeah. I would keep going, even just you and I in here, as if you're teaching a room full of people, because I'm recording it anyway, and then they can watch it afterwards. Right. Beautiful. Good idea. Gotcha. Yeah. All right, see you so guys. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Thanks, Deb. Take my hearing off. Okay, so ba based on what your department is saying, um, actually, let me step back. So in the Y1, everything is, is uh, this is going to be standard for everybody. So these weights are accurate for everybody doing a um, semester long course. Your exam is always only worth 10% which means your quarters in this case are worth 45% to um, make it 100%. Okay. Where, where it gets funky is here. There's a category weighting that will be set by the department. And I'm going to add a couple here. I'm not actually going to save this on her screen, but you'll see that there's for, um, for Deb and her department, they have these three specific um, categories that their assignments are based on it. And this would provide the weights for whatever those are. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to add that third one. And so what you would have is based on your department, you would have different, you may have different um, items here for your categories and your department head will say, okay, their projects are worth, you know, 30% of their grade, their participation is worth 20, and, um, you know, their portfolio, which is a huge project, is worth 50%. Not, not that that's what it is, but that's basically where you change those numbers. You don't have to um, change anything over here. It's just basically this weight when you're doing these. Um, this is preferential preference um, for individuals. You can decide to drop the lowest overall or drop the lowest by category. Um, that's up to you or, or maybe it's decided by the department. I actually am gonna save this for Deb and mess her up a little bit. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come down here to Y1. So you'll see an example of the semester class and the, the full year class. And you know, as, as you change it to term weighting, you can see it automatically adds, like I said before. But this time you have a little bit more. I'm just gonna click through them here. So again, what they're saying, here is 
each each full quarter is worth 20 and your exams are worth 10 and everything adds up to 100 and this is probably the only thing that can be a gotcha but I, it is set by me but if you were to change it to term waiting points your calculations wouldn't make sense so when somebody tells me that power school is is not calculating correctly it's only because i'll say we someone told it to calculate incorrectly <laughs> <laughs> So that's, that's pretty much the, the basic of, of setting this up. It's very straightforward. The, the document that I have, actually, I took pictures and went through these steps as well. Um, the only thing I can't um, say for certain is what your weightings are for your categories. But just as in, this, in the, the um, semester long class, all your quarters are um, category weight. The only difference, I'm going to not save that and just jump out of it, is your exam weight. So you can change this to 100 if you want, but the weight is already 100%. And if you leave it at total points, it will calculate correct, correctly, which is why I didn't go to it in the semester one. If you try to, to in theory, if you had a, a test category um, that was 100%, you could do category weighting here and then change it to test and then leave it at 100%. But the way I've set up the, the push down to the system is it's total points, it's 100%, and then we just let the year long um, do the averaging for us. So it's best not to, to really touch this one. Um, this, this wasn't um, always the way it worked. I was able to do a little bit more from the district to push down on certain things. So I, I would, I would kind of leave the exams alone unless for some reason, um, you know, something happens and you need to double the weight. Say you wanted to say, well, that was a really tough exam. And, and you know, I, I want them to have, make that count 200%. Um, so so basically, John, what, what this would do is count it twice. I'm, I'm actually going to remove that because I don't want to mess her up. Somebody say something? Yeah. Um, is the, uh, I'm, I'm looking at my, Sean O'Connor, I'm looking at my classes. It doesn't look like they're set up. Yeah. So, so uh, at, the be at the beginning, I, I, we threw it in the chat, Sean. Um, this is not for you guys because you're not set up. We didn't okay. know that. We didn't know it would be like this today. So um, I'm going to have a separate one with you guys after we're sure that everything's set up on your side. Okay. And then it, yeah. for, you, for you guys, I'll just be going through the, the standard setup, not the traditional grade setup. All right. Thank you, Sean. You're welcome. Okay. So let's, um, let's get out of these, uh, the settings page for now. Uh, if you were here to ask questions, we could go back. But I have a question. So they would go and do that for each of the classes, right? Each of their have, sections. Yes, every class that you have, you'll see here, when you open it up, you'll see that you have to do each single one of these. Yep, I just wanted to make sure that was clear. Yeah. Now, if you have the same class, but you have two different sections, So if her, say her fashion design one was, had the same um, categories and, and was going to be set up exactly the same, she can copy all of those settings to another class. That's all. But, but you have to know prior if that class is going to be set up exactly the same. And, and actually, I, I, I do believe in Deb's case that their um, categories are consistent across all of their classes. Mm -hmm. So you would be able to do semester one to semester one. Um, and if you really wanted to, it'll say it's going to correct it for you, but you could do semester one to semester two as, as well. And it would just correct 
the Q1 to Q3, the uh, Q2 to Q4, and the X1 to X2. Okay. Um, but that's up to you if you want to just, if you go through the, the first time around and you, and you just leave it on semester, you are guaranteed that all your semester one classes are, your, your semester and your four-year classes are all set. And then you could do semester two as you get closer, or you could do it all at once and just go in there and do the, do the first, do one semester two class and then copy it. That's awesome. That's, that's also in the um, document that I created for you. So under grading, we have categories, score sheet, and assignment list. Your score sheet has all your kids and will eventually have um, assignments over here. So this is the way it shows all your kids. You can click on them, which will bring up more detail on the assignments as, you know, whether they were tardy for that class or if, the, if they were absent that day or the, the uh, assignment is missing or late or whatever, depending on how you, you, you code it. Um, but I'm gonna jump here to assignment list and I know no assignments are complete. I think it's the plus at the top there. Yes, thank you. You're welcome. So as you can see, it's automatically choosing the first day of the, um, the first day kids are here. Um, when you wanna do the due dates, uh, you can have them due the same day. Um, that's really whatever you wanna do. This due date is, doesn't necessarily hold anybody to anything other than if you put a realistic due date in there, it'll remind you that that item was late if you go to put something in. So I know some of you wouldn't even wanna put a date in there. Um, it's, it's required. Uh, but if you don't, if you're using it um, the way it's supposed to be used, that would automatically mean that student had something late, which can also lead to decreasing points or whatever. There's a lot of other variables. They don't automatically happen, but it lets you know um, that that would happen. Um, you could, if she had, actually, let me, we'll, we'll take a look at this class. Um, hold on one second. I'm just going to jump down here. I'm going to hit this plus. So as, as you see, Deb has a couple of sections of pottery. So, of course, maybe I just saw pottery one and pottery two. I lied. I thought, she, I thought these were a couple of uh, pottery ones, but if, we'll use it as an example. She could select these, say those were all pottery ones. She could select all three of those potteries and create a project with these dates and it's one, one assignment that will be pushed out to all three of her classes. And as you can see, they all have these, um, these, these due dates on them. There's only one problem with this. Basically what that does is creates an assignment that's linked between all of those classes. And if you change that in one class, it'll change it in all. So if you have one class that is falling behind, um, you would have to manually come back in and identify that one class and change the um, the due date on that. Otherwise, it will also, it'll age out for them. And, and although it won't actually affect anything realistically, it'll prompt you to say that that's late. Um, even though you know you wanted it, you're giving them more time. So this is, this is good if you, if you keep this date far out enough where you know they're going to have it done prior. Um, it'll save you time because if you do have sections of the same thing, you can create one assignment that's going to all the students. Um, I mean, all, all your sections. Uh, while, while we're in this assignment, I'm not gonna, you, you could assign um, weights to different assignments depending on how you wanted to weight it. In, in most cases, your, uh, your points here are based off of, in this case, this would be saying, 
whatever assessment I'm using on this assignment is going to be based off of a 10 scale. Um, the, the best way is to always leave it at 100. I'm not telling you you have to do it that way. I'm just saying people will get involved with, you know, having 13 questions and then say, well, they think things are off, but you're doing math when you're doing this, right? So your scale, ultimately, it's going to convert everything to a percent anyway. So it's probably best to leave it out of 100 or out of, out of 10, um, just, just to keep it easier on you. But, but realize that um, if it's out of 10, you know, a six is a 60. It's not going to, to change it to like a 65 or a 67. You're not going to be able to give those extra points that may or may not be needed later on. Um, standards, I think I'll have to send out another thing. The, these are the um, expectations, the standards. I, these were set up a while ago and there's, there's a, a list that I'll be sending out that says, if you're in this department, these are the standards you're looking at. But you would check these off. So now these standards are assigned to that assignment, which means, and because I selected project, chances are collaborative work skills would be one if they're working together or if it was an independent project um, and needed some, uh, just some assistance, you, you might add this one and then self-direction. I mean, it kind of makes sense. Um, so that's based off what your, your assessment is at the end of that assignment. I'm trying to think what else I can show you here. This, this would be um, a little different and this is a little bit more advanced on this page. So you can create um, groups of students that you could give specific assignments to at specific levels if you needed to. Um, this is the piece that gets into a, a little bit more individual um, individualization of the class. Um, if you have one student that excels in something, you could give them specific assignments that you're not going to give the other class and grade them based on that. Um, we, we haven't used this piece, but it's always available. And if you want to explore further, I'll just, I would go into that with you um, on a one-on-one -on -one Your publish are all set to do immediate um, in the settings. That's the way we have them set. But you could publish that assignment on a specific date if you wanted to say, take one day and fill out, you know, I know I'm going to give all these assignments, but I don't want my screen crowded with all these assignments or the students crowded with all those assignments. Um, and I could publish them all at a specific date, whether it was one week prior, obviously. You can use this if you have, if you put due dates in, you could do, um, day, if you do days, I want it published three days before the due date because I want to just give them three days for that assignment. So there's a lot of prep you can do if you really wanted to get into it. But in most cases, you guys are doing that assignment the day before. So you want, you want them to know that, that as soon as you publish that, that that's their next assignment. Not going to save anything here. When you do student views, um, you can go by student in a summary view. Um, obviously, we don't have any assignments here yet, but in a summary view um, and look at all your students and there'll be little graphs um, after your assessments are taken to, um, to be able to show you how those students are doing against one another. And possibly if you have you know, two sections in one day, how they're doing against that other section, just as a comparison on um, how those kids are getting the content and how they're assessing against other students in another section. Maybe there's another section that you, you did something, your instruction was different for them as it was for this class and now you're seeing that as, as results in assessment. And this, this is just a quick uh, look if you wanna do progress, you can see who's missing and who's late and you can, you'll be able to see uh, grade scales and nice graphic charts. And I can see Susie constantly laughing at me. 
I'm not laughing at you. I was helping somebody. <laughs> I think you're doing awesome. Oh, you're helping great. me because I don't get to do this all the time. So I think this will be very helpful. Yeah, the, the next one will be much better, right? Um, so uh, under reports, you can do individual student records, which are great for conferences, which I guess in this case, you'd be able to Zoom the parent and share that with them. Um, there's a score sheet report, student roster. Um, these reports, um, I'll say they, they just aren't the best looking reports. Um, but if you needed to, the, these are the, the, the standard canned reports. And if they don't provide you with something that you really need, um, you could just ask me. And there are other ways to get reports out of uh, PowerSchool, which may not be directly in Power Teacher Pro, but you may have to back up and just be at the, the Lent Your Power um, Teacher landing page. Um, you probably won't be using any of these, right? I mean, that, that'll bring you back to the Power Teacher portal, which I'll do just so that it brings you right back here. Um, I know that the Daily Bulletin, um, because it, it's been redesigned, we've never used it in the past, but because of the way it's redesigned, there may actually be content here, which um, will pop up right here. And um, I don't know what they'll use it for, maybe alerts or just the morning message. Um, but we may be using that more often. And if you don't see it when you first log in, you can always check it from here. Um, meals, that's not important for us. Um, I'm not gonna go into recommendations right yet because they're really not due until after January and you won't be using it for a while. That's kind of a wrap up. It's kind of awkward not to do this without to do this without questions. Uh, so I don't actually know what I missed because because there's no humans here besides me. Is, I know, I know. <laughs> but I still think it gives them definitely a lot of information, and it might be enough for many of them to get started. And then if they have questions, they know they can reach out. Yeah, and I and I would suggest uh, click around. You'll you'll see some new things that are brought in there. Um, there's a couple new packages on analytics that have populated some of these pages. So you might see something that um, you're like, oh, that's great. I can see that I still have, um, Piper is still missing that thing. And I totally forgot about it. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that's about it. All right, that's awesome. I'm gonna hit um, stop record and we'll get that uploaded.